Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled The Architecture of Yemen and Its Reconstruction by Salma Samar Damluji, published by Lawrence King. I apologize for mispronouncing the Arabic names. The first edition of this book in 2007 was dedicated to the sweep of architecture in the cities of the provinces from Yafi to Hadramut. The work was based on original architectural research and surveys carried out in the country over a period that spanned almost two decades, 1987-2006. Some of the sites covered in the first edition were damaged or destroyed, particularly in Aden and Lahij. This updated edition, over a decade later, introduces a new chapter that investigates reconstruction projects in Hadramut during the period 2006 to 2014, after which a period of turmoil hit the country with the war on Yemen in 2015. It also includes an emergency project in Shibam, which is on the UNESCO World Heritage List, that began in 2017. All original materials and research papers, drawings, photographs and texts for every project in this book are archived at the Académie d'Architecture in Paris. The political unrest in Yemen and the dire economic situation since uh, 2011 has made security an issue in the country. The logistics of working in Hadramut became increasingly precarious and difficult. However, the support and modest funding we received ensured the restoration and reconstruction of a few of the distinguished landmarks and buildings that have impacted on the urban fabric and communities there. The landscape of Yemen is spread with buildings of architectural value. Neglect and dilapidation abound in the absence of professional or civic institutions that recognize the importance of investing in the traditional architecture or in the natural materials and resources that constitute the fundamental wealth of the country's historic topography and remarkable terrain. The situation has since been exacerbated beyond apprehension and without accountability, as the open-ended list of damaged, destroyed and bombed out cities continue to be compiled. Each lost site becomes a deep scar etched on the face of the silent country. The need for an emergency national policy for post-war reconstruction that responds to the human tragedy that has befallen entire communities cannot be denied or understated. The success of such policy is wholly contingent upon incorporating the sensitive and complex components of the architecture, urban fabric and balanced ecological environment that encompasses Yemen's archaeological sites and classified natural reserves. Furthermore, it must contain and validate the ingenious design and construction discipline using the knowledge of the keepers of this legacy, the inhabitants, master builders and craftsmen of Yemen. Located in the southwest corner of the Arabian Peninsula, Yemen was at the center of a network of early urban civilizations that produced one of the world's most distinguished architectural institutions. This discipline, which remained active into the last decades of the 20th century, is characterized by strong functional and aesthetic qualities, and it is responsible for the extraordinary urban fabric that can still be seen today in villages and cities in Arabia. Towers and skyscrapers of mud brick or stone were constructed on the basis of innovative design concepts and building technology developed by the master builders and craftsmen of Yemen. Meanwhile, the more recent modern development of cities in Arabia and the Gulf region has been typified by the hasty construction of buildings in an eclectic range of modes lifted from both the modern international and Islamic styles. The importance of Yemen's architectural heritage extends beyond the magical city of Sana, described by Arab historians and chroniclers, or Shibam in Wadi Hadramut. In the early 1970s, these cities captivated the Italian filmmaker Pierpaolo Pasolini, who drew international attention to them and prompted UNESCO to designate Sana, Shibam and Wadi Hadramut as World Heritage Sites. Yemen is the only Arabian country to boost such a distinctive legacy of architecture and urban planning. 
Its significance to architects is unequivocal, and it is essential to ensure the survival of its citizen buildings, which provide an important premise for the development of modern Yemeni architecture and future city building. Well into the 1980s, the selected cities, towns and villages featured in this book, amongst hundreds of others in Yemen, survived intact, embodying a remarkable resource for architects and designers. Salma Samar Damluji's architectural research project was intended as preparatory fieldwork, a line of inquiry designed to support an alternative approach to architecture. From the outset, the project addressed broad themes of architecture, design and urban construction. The idea was to establish a creative vision of architecture, emphasizing its civic role in the context of urban development, regeneration and renewal, and the role of master builders in new construction projects. This continues to be her aspiration, even as she is often forced to wonder at the way architectural knowledge is squandered and wasted when watching the destruction of architectural heritage in the cities in which she worked. This book is about cities that are being lost. It is for those who refuse to let this loss occur unopposed, and who consider that architecture can offer an intelligent pattern and matrix for the future. This book is intended to provide a source of reference for both uh, the formal architectural grammar and the creative structural discipline that establish Yemeni cities. It investigates the accumulated knowledge, expertise and intelligence of Yemeni builders and patrons who developed a particular architectural paradigm. Their cities remain imbued with silent pride and wonder long after they have departed. It is also concerned with the creative art of building, the skill for realizing design and detail, and the sense of planning that established Yemeni towns. Now that many of the people who sustained this tradition are dead and there are no architectural institutions to replace their knowledge and experience, the basis for the strength and soul of Yemeni cities will be difficult to reconstruct into the future. Against the bleak survey of threats uh, to Yemen's uh, architectural landscape and condition, there are modest but encouraging endeavors taking place, indicating that all is not lost in the kingdom of mad brick. In Shibam, the restoration in 2003 of the small, attractive 15th century Maruf Bajamal Mosque is commendable. With its 27 domes, 20 columns and courtiers, it stands outside the city's western shore. The architectural rehabilitation of the Al Habshi Palace at Al Habta in 1997, with the reconstruction of additional mud brick buildings for accommodation and facilities, has created a sympathetic ambience, turning the complex into a fine new hotel, a location favored by visitors to Wadi Hadramut. A more recent hotel project at the summit of Akabat Kaila is designed as a set of 12 independent studios for accommodation overlooking the spectacular Wadi and Haid al Jazil. Built in kirf and mud brick, it is an environmentally refreshing project enhanced by traditional architecture and materials and constructed by a local master builder from Tarim. The reconstruction of Husen al Falas attached to the Old Sur in Sayun, on the mountain overlooking the city from the east, is a fairly small townscape project in the context of this significant and once very handsome city, but it is also worthy of note. The reconstruction of this building from a ruined state on the initiative of the governor of Hadramut and local master builders points to the potential for mud buildings and techniques in madar and yajur, sun-dried and baked bricks respectively, to be revived even where structures have collapsed. The reconstruction projects illustrated in the book uh, were initiated by the Doran uh, Mud Brick Architecture Foundation, established as a response to the need to create an institutional framework to work on the earth architecture and urban heritage of Wadi Doran and Hadramut. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video.